Okay, good morning, everybody, and Hazak Baruch. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Tuesday morning as we are moving right along, full steam ahead, everyone. Perashat Haye Sarah, and I'd like to share with you today, of course, Rabbeinu Bachye, who we are studying this year. And we know Rabbeinu Bachye, for those that haven't been with us earlier, uh, Rabbeinu Bachye likes to begin every perasha with an intro, with an introduction. And uh, there were many great rabbis historically that have dedicated their weekly perasha shi'ur just to the intro of Rabbeinu Bahye of each perasha of each week. So let's see today what he wants to teach us in his introduction to perashat Chaye Sarah. He always bases it on a pasuk in Mishle. Mishle, Proverbs, written by who? Who wrote it? <coughs> who wrote Mishle? Give it a couple of seconds. Who wrote Mishle? <coughs> we need to know this. Very good. King Solomon. Shlomo HaMelech. Shlomo HaMelech writes Mishle, chapter 15, Pasuk 24. Let's read this Pasuk together. Ora Haim Lemala Lemaskil Leman Sur Misheol Mata. What does that mean? Ora Haim Lemala Lemaskil. A maskil from the word Sechel. Maskil means someone with intellect, intelligence. Le maskil for an intelligent person, ora hayim le mala. The way of life is upwards. Le ma'an sur misheol mata. So that he will, sur is to turn from heading towards misheol mata, towards hell, towards damnation. The Pasuk is telling us, says Rabbeinu Bahia. Shlomo Amelech, Allah wa shalom, hodi'enu bekan. Shlomo is teaching us here, ki ha maskil. That an intelligent person, Makir Tchunat Olam Hazeshu Olam said, he is aware that this world that we're in, this terrestrial life, is headed for destruction. He knows that true life is only to be found Lemala. Lemala is up. The real investment should be up. Ve'alken, and therefore, and we're studying over here, we have to pay attention to his words because we're talking about over here, not a nice rabbi from 10 years ago. He lived 800 years ago. This is a big book over here. Says Rabbeinu Bahye, a wise man knows to worry about that world. Ve'alken, masirum salek atzmo metavat haolam And therefore, he removes himself from the uh, pleasures, temptations, of this world. And he doesn't make of this world anything permanent. So that he will be spared from falling down uh, in the next world. He gives a beautiful parable. And I'm sure you heard the parable before. But remember he wrote this parable 800 years ago. It was a person who lived in a city. He knows that this is only a temporary town. He plans on moving next week or next month. I don't know if any of you ever moved homes. But if you ever moved houses or apartments, do you buy furniture now for this apartment that you're in? If you know you're moving in a week? Of course not. He doesn't buy over here. Why? He says, Because his mind is there. He's focused on there. She'atid ladur where he's going to live, dirat keva permanently. En tzafek shelo yishtadeh liknot sham sadot ukramim. For sure the guy is not going to start investing in fields over here. Again, today in real estate, it doesn't matter where you own because you could uh, monitor everything remote. But back then, if you're moving, you're not going to buy a field in this town when you're moving to another town. Velo kelim vehavte ba'it. You're not going to buy furniture. For this old house that you're going to leave in a few months. Because you know you're not going to be here. So to the wise man or woman. That knows that there's a next life. That there's an afterlife in the next world. As Jews we believe in an afterlife. When a person dies, we know that that's not the end. That's why as a Jew, we can never really cry too much on death. When someone dies, even a loved one, it's forbidden to 
you know, rip the skin, uh, make tattoos out of ashes because of mourning and pain. Because you're supposed to mourn, but you can't mourn excessively. You need to know this is not the final stop. A person that knows that, they're mourning, it's a, it's, it's a loss, it's sad. But I know they're in another world, I know they're in a better world. And therefore, Hamaskila Yodeya Shiesh Ora Hayim Lemala. Eno Mishtadel Beyana Guf Klal. Really, a person who's maskil doesn't tend, doesn't focus too much on the body. Only what's needed. What's needed, what's required to live. This is the famous Mesila Yesharim. He says that the Neshama came into this world, and the Neshama knows that this world is temporary. Really, if I'm going back, I, I need the body, by the, by the way, you know, it's important to, to understand this point. If the goal is the next world, so just put me there. The answer is, but I need this world. I need this world to do the mitzvot. You have to realize that. Very important, Nikudav, a very important point I just want to spend a minute on. That means you cannot, in the next world, serve God. Lo hametimi hallelujah. The opportunity to say a bracha and say, God, I love you, is all here. So right now, I want you to close your eyes and say, Hashem, I love you. Hashem, thank you for giving me this and that. List right now in your head five things. The love, the connection that you can build with Hashem in this world, you cannot get in the next world. Lo hametimi hallelujah. You cannot praise Him when you're dead. So the body, the body is actually very needed. The tzaddikim, they didn't run to die. Because you may say, well, if the goal is the next world, so let's die. Let's all jump off a building and die so that we can go straight to the next world. No, of course not. Because we need this world, we want this world, so that we can do mitvot. This is where we have the chance to do. And a person who is here has that chance, and that chance is not going to be available in the next world. So we need it. This world is necessary. Um... It's the only place that you can do the mitzvot. Right? It's the only place to earn the currency for the next world. The tzaddikim, when they died on their deathbed, they weren't happy. They were sad. Because they knew that they, need, they needed this world. They wanted this world so that they could build more in the, for the next world. But ultimately, right? The Gaon of Vilna on his deathbed, when he cried, the student said, Rabbi, why are you crying? You're going straight to Gan Eden. He said, I'm crying because I know that in a few minutes I won't be able to wear tzitzit. That's all he hear. That, that I could purchase mitzvot, I could only do for the next few minutes. Once I'm gone, that's it. I have it. And, and there's an advantage also. And we're going to see soon. But the opportunity to do is only now. We got to grab the opportunities, gentlemen and ladies. We got to grab it now. Hamaskil yodeya sheesh ora hayim lemala. A person that knows what's the purpose of life, he doesn't, doesn't really focus too much on this world, unless it's needed. Right? What's a necessity? So you do it to stay healthy, to stay functioning. But the goal, don't forget my friends, the goal. When you go to a, uh, when you go to a show in Vegas or in Chicago or wherever you go, so you get a room because you need a room. But it's foolish if a guy is going to spend all his money on the nicest room. Unless the company is paying for it, right? But you're not going to spend your money. Why should I spend my money on a temporary one-day room? I'll save the money for my, my real house where I live in, you know, where I come from. A man once came to visit the Hafez Chaim. He saw me, he said, he said uh, Rabbi, this is your house? Hafez Chaim had a very simple house. He didn't even have curtains, they say. He says, yeah, this is my humble abode. He says, well, I mean, where's your furniture? Where's all, where's all the stuff? Hafez Ayim said to the man, let me ask you, um, where are you staying over here? He said, I'm staying in this, in this hotel. He said, let me ask you, over there they have big sofas in the room, fancy, comfortable couch, big uh, bed. You have a massage chair. He says, no, I mean, it's a simple bed and table. He says, why? Why don't you get a big? He says, Rabbi, I have a big, but it's in my real house. Chavetz Chaim said, me too. I also have furniture. 
It's in my real house. So the tzaddikim knew to invest in the real world. Today you have a lot of people <coughs> that they're uh, investing in this metaverse. They're buying a lot of real estate. It's very interesting that people are investing in a world that they're not in. But really as Jews we do that. That's all we do. We're investing in Olam Haba. The metaverse, the real metaverse. It's here. It's, it's, it's coming. We don't have it yet. But people are investing millions into the metaverse. Why? It's not here. Because they know maybe that's where the future, they're ready to put millions into the future. We have to realize as Jews, we have a metaverse waiting for us. The real metaverse. Olam Haba. Olam Haba is waiting. We should make sure to invest. And Baruch Hashem, the tzaddikim, a lot of, a lot of people, all the people here, that I'm looking at, we know how to invest. Our money, when, when you give tzedakah, you're taking that $10, that $1,000. When you give it to charity, you are taking that and you're investing it in your metaverse. You have to know that. You're putting it in the metaverse. That's the only way to take it with you, by the way. If you hold on to it, people like to hold on to their money. Keep it in the bank account, guess what happens? Then it gets stuck in this world. If you want to transfer it give it to an Ani you just transferred it to your Olam Haba account you understand? because this world really is so temporary intelligent person doesn't make from this world the goal rather the goal is to fear God to do the mitzvot and that's why Solomon begins his book nothing of nothings this world is nothing. And he ends the book. Sof davar kol nishma et Elohim ira. At the end of the day, a person needs to know we fear God. So that's what it means. Ora hayim lemala lemaskil. That a person that's intelligent focuses on the next world. Now, he continues and says, Why does he call it ora hayim? Ora hayim means the path of life. Anyone know what's another way to say path in Hebrew? How would you say the word path in Hebrew? Very good, Jackie. Derech. Derech Chaim. Like we say, Derech Eretz. It's the path of proper conduct. What's Orach Chaim? Good question. Uma shehezkid lashon Orach velo Derech. You ready for this? Very, very beautiful. Lefishehum lashon Oreyach. Orach comes from the word Oreyach. It sounds like Oreyach. What's an Oreyach? Guess. Very good. Lefisha Adam Baulam Azeh. Person in this world needs to know that they are Keger Ba'aretz Veke Oreyah Natalalun. You're like a visitor. You're like a guest in a tavern. Kushem Sha Oreyah Nichnas Befundak. Just like when you go into a motel. Yodeya Atzmoshin is Yato Yom Mahar. You know you're leaving. You're checking out tomorrow. We have to realize we're all checking out. No one stays here forever. You know. You look at this world, and again, I'm not saying this to get anyone depressed. I hope, I hope I'm not doing that. Really, it's not the goal. It's the opposite. It's supposed to give us proper perspective. It's supposed to appreciate life. Remember, Hashem says, Besimcha. A person needs to live with Simcha. A person can live with Simcha when a person knows that the goal is the next world. I'll tell you why. You ready? Sometimes, why are people so depressed? How people, people so down? Because they're actually focusing too much on this world. You understand? When you make the goal this world, then a person says, well, I'm sick, and I don't have so much money, and this one has more money than me, this one has more honor than me. When a person realizes that there's a metaverse waiting for me, the real metaverse, in that world, I'm actually rich. So Hafez Chaim, he went through life happy. He didn't, it didn't bother him that he didn't have here. It didn't matter. That's out of my control how much money I have here. I'm investing in the real world and there I'm a millionaire. And he went through life happy. <laughs> you understand? So actually, focusing on the next world should give you more happiness down here. I hope that's clear because I'm not here to make anyone sad today. Not the goal. It's exciting. And a person knows that this existence, no matter how difficult, no matter how stressful, no matter what you're going through, and again, the Mesilat Yesharim says it can't be that we're here for this world. It doesn't make sense. 
Because look how much pain, struggles, sickness, illness. You know, a person lives till 70, maybe 80. How much of it is stress? How much of it is headache and bills and taxes and, you know, health insurance and mortgages? How many years of your life do you have real tranquility? I mean, think about it. How many years? And, th- and then kids. All your kids, you're hoping they're going to marry Jewish and stay healthy. Right? All life. I mean, if the goal of life was this world, Hashem would have been better off creating us really as animals. You look at animals, they're very happy. Animals don't have to worry about uh, getting, you know, uh, fire insurance for their homes. Animals, very content. They have peace of mind, simple, you know, their little house. They get the food for the day. They don't have investing and people that mess them over in business and loan. All the waja aras, we say. All the waja aras. You think animals have waja aras? Animals don't have headaches. I don't think so. Right? <laughs> oh, it's a great joke. My son told me. He said, Daddy, it's very healthy to eat grass. I said, really? Why? He said, if you eat grass, you don't get sick. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He said, yeah, did you ever see a cow at the doctor's office? <laughs> okay, maybe. But the cows, they don't get sick. They don't have colds. They, you know, I, I don't know. Mad cow disease, maybe. But either way, um, you know, why would God create us if the goal was this world? It's cruel if you think about it. It's like make, it's like God's like cruel to make me with all of the, for the few moments of happiness that are spread. But really, the goal can't be this world. It's got to be the next world. That's why Hashem gave us a neshama. That's why Hashem gave us uh, all the faculties that we have. You don't need a neshama for this world. If someone's going on a voyage for, uh, you know, one day, he takes a bag of, you know, apples and a piece of bread and a bottle of water. Imagine you see a guy going on a ship and he takes carts of eggs and cheese and meats and fish and vegetables and, you know, loaves and loaves and loaves of bread. And you see this guy going on his boat. What do you assume? Huh? You going, uh, where are you going? You going to discover America? I mean, all that, uh, all the eggs, where are, you, where are you going with that? Now imagine I told you, oh no, I'm going just for two hours, just to circle around, uh, you know, Liberty Island. <laughs> two hour trip, you're taking all these foods? So really, if a person realizes that, why did Hashem give me such a powerful neshama? If the goal is just Liberty Island, the goal is this world, I don't need a neshama. Animals, again, they don't have a neshama. They're very content. They, they do well. They're living well. They're happy. They're comfortable. To live in this world, you don't need a neshama. You just need to be strong, body, and food, and you're good. Chill the whole day. Chill, you know, in the water. Be a bird. Fly around. Amazing. It has to be. It has to be, gentlemen and ladies. It has to be. Please, please understand this. That we're not here for this world. This world is not the destination. A maskil, a wise man knows he's an oreyah from the word orah. He's a guest. He's waiting. Really, the soul is yearning to go back to the source with God, etc., etc. Beautiful. The Yadua, and now you need to know. Know this, my friends, that when a person passes away, it's really now the beginning of life. Did you hear that? Actually, death is when life begins. So long, you know, a baby, just compare it to a baby, a fetus in the mother's womb. You know, the fetus thinks he's living. All of a sudden, there's a lot of noise and pressure, yelling, and the baby starts crying, and boom, 
gets sucked out of the womb. Imagine his twin brother in there. He sees his brother. God, brother, I'm going to miss you. He thinks his brother died, right? But really, that's where life begins. Would you say that the brother died? No, he's now living. Now you're alive. So the same way leaving the womb, going into this world, you're entering a higher level of existence. So too, my friends, when we leave this world and we go to the next, a person's entering a higher level of existence. And he's actually starting to now live. Shlomo HaMelech says, Anyone know this pasuk? Tov Shem, Mishem and Tov. Better to have a good name than good oil. Right? Because a good, good oil, at the end of the day, oil will only help you in this world. A good name goes with you to the next world. Ve'yom ha'mavet, miyom hevaledo. The day of death is greater than the day of birth. Why? Shebah yom amita, my friends, where, where are you going to find? With, we're reading over here gems. I hope, I hope you appreciate I love this. I, I mean, this is amazing. We're picking up over here diamonds. Shebah yom amita, miyom haleda. There's an advantage of the next world to this world, of death over life. Ben ba'olam hazeh, ben ba'olam haba. In both respects, this world and the next world. It, twofold. It's better death than life. Twofold. Let's see how. Number one. La'olam haba, in the next world. She'i afshar la'nefesh la'asig malat ha'adam al-yon ki mitat ha'guv. Obviously, for the soul, it makes sense. Because when a guy dies, when a person's dead, their soul can now start to live. So for sure, I understand in the next world why death is better than life. But even in this world, you know why? Shlomo HaMelech was not a dumb man. Shlomo HaMelech chose his, wise careful, his words carefully. When Shlomo HaMelech says, better the day of death than the day of birth, he's specific. You know why? Even for this world, it's better. A person's attributes a person's deeds are not really known umpursamim or recognizable ki'im bayom amita all in the day of death shahare bayom alida lo yakiru mihu when you're born all you have is potential potential is nice but there's something bigger than potential anyone know what's bigger than potential actual you see when a person is Young, they have potential, but they have nothing. When a person is dead, older, they actually actualized all that potential. In a way, right? Um, Viktor Frankl writes in Man's Search for Meaning, I'd much rather be old with actual accomplishments than young with potential ones. Yeah, something very rich about that. That's what he's saying over here. Rabbi Nubah, is saying that. When, you, when a person's born, even in your lifetime, even in your lifetime, listen to what he's saying here, even in your lifetime that you did accomplish, those accomplishments are temporary because who knows if they'll stick. Maybe a person will change course. Maybe a person will start to do the wrong things. When a person's right, alive, how do you know he's not going to undo what he did? You can't be sure he's going to remain righteous. However, when a person passes away, now we know. And now we come to Sarah Imenu. Look at this. So long that she was alive. She had three miracles. Anyone know what they were? Three miracles. Let's go. Number one. She had her candle would light every week, it would stay one week without going out, from Friday to Friday. Like the Beit HaMikdash, by the way. Every, right, it stayed 24 hours. Ubracha Metsuya Ba'isa. There was something very beautiful in the dough. Also like the Beit HaMikdash, they had the Lechem Apanim. Ve'anan Kashur Ala Oil, and there was a cloud covering at all times, like the Beit HaMikdash. Only when she died did people start to realize that they were gone. 
You see, when a person is living it's human nature in life, you don't realize what you have till you lose it. So long that someone's doing something, you take it for granted. It's only after the guy dies in the shul, and all of a sudden, breakfast comes, and you wonder, where's all the... Where, what's going on over here? Where's the eggs? We have eggs every day, usually. Oh, you know who made the eggs? It was so-and-so. What? He made them? I never knew. Right. When they die, now you appreciate them. So, Sarah only we could recognize her greatness after she died. When the things stopped. Ve'od, which is, by the way, a shame. It's a shame. It shouldn't be like that. We should try to, instead of eulogizing the dead, praise the living. Very nice line. In life, don't wait for someone to die to eulogize them. If there's something beautiful about someone that you know, Think about someone that you know. Don't wait for them to die and then say, wow, yeah, yeah, they were so this, they were so that. Praise them now. Now. Go to them. Call them. Hey, just want you to know, I really admire your parenting. I love how much you pray. Don't wait for them to die and then say, ah, the funeral, they were so giving, they were so nice, right? Why? It's a shame. Let the, let the living person hear it about themselves. It's a misvah to make people feel good. So number one, she, the three things. Sarah is the first person to be buried in the text. She lived for many years. Now, really, he goes over here into a long, detailed discussion of uh, Gilgulim. You know what's Gilgul? Reincarnation. Where he really, basically, just to say the point, he says, really, she, she died right after Yitzchak's Akeda. But there's a paragraph in between. About the birth of Rivka. Why? Because right after Sarah died, Rivka was born. And he says that, he says this, you know, we can't deny what he says. Really, he wants to say over here that uh, Rivka is a reincarnation of Sarah. Rivka couldn't die, uh, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't be born until Sarah died. Because the second Sarah died, then it came into Rivka. Because really, Rivka is a continuation of Sarah. And she's really continuing in her good deeds. Who, right? That's why when Rif, that's why when Rifka came, the three things came back: the candle, the cloud, and the bracha in the dough. Very interesting over here. He goes over here into this idea, Sarah really and Rifka being one. But either way, let's move forward. We have a few more minutes left. Uh, just to continue on this point, though, of uh, a person needing to remember and focus on the real metaverse. He says, "Al derech hamidrash." What does it mean? Vayu hayesara mea shana esrim shana sheva shanim. He says she lived till one twenty-seven, and then shenei hayesara. These were the years of Sarah. What is that doing? What, what, what's going on? This pasuk it just seems very redundant. So he says over here, "Vayu." Take the word "vayu." He loves doing this. Vav yud he yud vav. Add it all up. 6 and 10, 16, and hey is 5, it's 21, and yud is 10, it's 31, and vav is 6, is 37. 37, anyone, does that number mean anything to anyone? 37. Miyom Yitzchak, ad yom ha'akedah lamed zayin shana. From the day Yitzchak was born, till his akedah, our tradition holds, 37 years, and him, Hayu Ikar Hayeha Shil Sarah, these were the real years of Sarah's life. When you ask Sarah, how long did she live for? 
The first 100 years of her life meant nothing. Sorry, the first 90 years of her life meant nothing. She was barren. She needed a child. The real years, the quality years, was Vayihiyu Hayesara. Vayihiyu, 37. Because before that, she didn't have a child. Without children, she was considered dead. And that's why it says Vayihiyu Hayesara. She considered the main years of her life, Vayihiyu, 37. Very nice. We find something similar, he says. Vayihi Yaakov Be'eres Misraim. Yud Zayin Shana. Vayihi Yaakov Be'eres Misraim. Yaakov lived. The word is Vayihi. Add that up. Vav Yud Het Yud. Six and ten and eight and ten is 34. Yes, my math is good. 34. Why? Because you die in Shana, 17 years for the first 17 years of Yosef's life. And then 17 more years he lived in Egypt. 17 plus 17, 34. If you ask Yaakov, how many quality years did you have? Only 34. The 17 that I was with Yosef before he was let, sold. And the 17 that I had after I found him. But he, Yaakov, Yaakov, his life really was only 34 years. We find that by Yaakov, by he, and we find that here by Sarah. Vayihiyu. Fine. Now, I just want to share one more piece. Maybe two, let's see. Vayakom Avraham me'al penemeto. Pasuk says, Abraham got up from his dead. He spoke to the people. And he says over here, Trust teaching you proper conduct. When he's speaking in front of people, stand up. When he's speaking to someone, it's not proper to sit down. It shows arrogance. Stand up and talk to them. And later on, we're going to continue and say, Again, he does it. He stands up. Beautiful. Fine. And what he asks over here, very interesting. Why does he say, That's masculine. Sarah is feminine. It should say, What's meto? His, his dead. Masculine. She's a female. Sarah. Look again, 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 again. Look at this. Because the body is masculine. When a person dies, it's only the body that dies. The soul doesn't die, my friends. The soul is around forever. And therefore, it's only the body which is masculine that remains. And that's why he uses a masculine tense. One final idea, my friends. Uh, just to tie it all together. And then we wrap up this Rabbeinu Bachye idea of, of, uh, that, of dealing with the sale, the purchase of the land for Sarah. And again, there's a lot more that he discusses and there's a lot more commentary. But just some nuggets. Pasuk says, let's fast forward to uh, uh, Pasuk 20. Yesh le'et bonen ha'perasha azot. Really, you know, we could conclude from all of this. Ki afin tegdal malat ha'adam, even if a person is so successful. Ve'haya ha'olam kulo umlo'o shelo. And you have it all. You have money, you have real estate. En lo bo ela kivro shel arba amot. You know what you really have in this world? All you have is your six feet. Shehare Avraham, because Avraham Avinu, Kola Aretz Nitnalo Bimatana, he had all of Israel. But what does he have to do? Mashakana Shami Shonam Marata Machpila. The first thing he actually owns, the only thing he really buys, is a Marata Machpila. It's this place to bury his wife. And therefore, therefore, a person, again, this is all just coming back to what we said, a person needs to remember where to invest 
their time, where to invest their energy, where to invest their money. How much of life do we spend fighting with people because of an inch on the backyard or because of the driveway or you're blocking me or don't cover my thing or you didn't shovel my snow or you shovel too little. You know, that's your problem. We're fighting for people with people on inches. It don't matter. It don't matter. Really, what are, you, what are you fighting for? This world? You're getting all upset? Destroying your simha? A person's got to focus on the real world. That's all we have, really, at the end of the day. That's our real house. Let's not forget what the Hafez Chaim taught us. That uh, we got to put the furniture in that house. Let's not forget what Abinu Bahia said. That if you're visiting, you're not going to buy furniture if you're moving in a week. The furniture is not going to help you in the new house. So whatever we do, and again, not that we should abstain from this world. Judaism doesn't preach that at all. We don't say we should you know, live in abstinence and just uh, celibacy alone. We don't, we don't believe in that either. A person engages. We engage. We, we buy. We purchase. We, we own. We do. What we eat. That's what the Jew realizes. And I could take that food and I could do a mitzvah with it. I could take money. Is money good or bad? Depends. Depends what you're doing with it. Money that's used to put my kids in yeshiva. That's amazing money. Money that's used to help people. That's amazing money. Money that's used to buy kosher food so we could eat kosher. That's amazing money. So everything in life that Sadiq realizes I could use it really to enhance my olam haba experience. We should be zokhe always to remember like, like he says over here, ora hayim, that the maskil remembers, the wise man remembers to focus on ora hayim, that we're only in oreyah in this world. And really this is a cause for simha. This is a cause for happiness because now you have a bad day in work. How do you come home? Happy or sad? You come home happy or sad? Well, if my focus is this world, I'm sad. Because I had a bad day. But if my focus is the next world, I had an amazing day. I was honest today. I gave a nice compliment to someone. I smiled. I said thank you. I said a bracha. I listened to Rabbi Mizrahi uh, morning perasha class. I had a sick day. And now, you come in happy. Your wife sees you. Your husband sees you. What's going on? You made a lot of money. We won the lottery. Honey, yes, we won. In the metaverse. A lot of money, Baruch Hashem, today we made for the real world. I invested millions in the real world, in the only world that really matters. Okay, either way, we'll stop over here, everyone. Have a fantastic day. Day full of simcha. Baruch Hashem, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.